All me. right, so let's jump right into it. This was originally posted by Hi Hal Game Guri on the forums. <laughs> Security researchers, the original article is from an, uh, an end gadget. End gadget. Security <laughs> researchers have discovered a new security flaw, yet another one in Intel chips from the last five years or so that is, and this is a quote, completely unpatchable. Now, some security flaws can be patched after the fact. Like that's what you'll see with things like, um, you know, iPhone jailbreaks. Um, particularly back in the day, I remember the arms race was almost always back and forth. They'd find a new flaw, Apple would patch it. They'd find another one, Apple would patch it. That was actually like a very fun thing to follow back then. Yeah, because it was it was really interesting seeing like these different groups tearing it apart and then Apple fixing it super quickly in both sides and there's like different teams on each side. Yeah, I don't know. But sometimes these patches are not fixable because either there's something that is hard coded into the into the architecture of the chip or there's some element of the firmware that relies on some physical hardware elsewhere in the device that you just you, you can't turn off and it leaves the door open for whatever for whatever reason. Uh, an example of this would be the Nintendo Switch. So part of Nvidia's Tegra firmware, if I recall correctly, was um, allowing users to run Android on the thing. And in order for Nintendo to fix it, they actually had to do a new hardware revision of the switch. There was just absolutely nothing they could do through a conventional firmware fix yeah. to close the hole. Yeah. Um, so here we go. This one involves the converged security and management engine. Yay, the CSME, which controls boot up, power, and cryptographic functions. <laughs> well, that's terrible. Um, it's a 486-based CPU with a boot ROM and is actually the first thing the CPU runs when powered on. Oh, fascinating. So an attacker is able to take advantage of a gap in security that can inject malicious code and eventually take over the whole PC. They can do that through like local network attacks right now, but that part of it does seem patchable. It's the physical access level that doesn't seem patchable, which, to be honest, if someone has physical access to your machine, there's lots of ways your machine can be compromised outside of like a flaw in your CPU. So the window of opportunity is apparently very short. So uh, while one of the first things the CSME does is protect memory, there is actually a period of time where memory is unprotected. So during that window, again, someone with physical access to the computer yeah. could make a DMA transfer to that unprotected memory and inject the malicious code. So because the vulnerability allows the attacker to take control of code execution before the hardware key generator is locked and the boot code is hard coded into the CPU, this means that the vulnerability cannot be fixed. <sighs> now, exploiting this at this stage in the game requires extreme technical know-how, physical access, and precise timing to pull off. Um, and, and Intel and has Intel officially said, said that <laughs> end users should maintain physical possession of their platforms. Um, which, yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's good advice. I to feel be clear. like they probably should have addressed the flaw at all because they literally didn't. But they're also not really wrong either. Um, like if you if you have something that the security is so important for that like someone is going to go after you in this way, yes. which is pretty freaking intense, physical security should be highly important for you. And there's there's been a lot of push in that direction, like a lot of yep. um, uh, penetration testers for different like uh, IT institutes have started working on physical access stuff, going back to older routes, like breaking really? into server centers and like taking hard drives and being like, well, I won. Um, huh. and it, it's an interesting conversation that's starting to be pushed forward because like the value of data is just constantly rising. Right. So physical attacks are like coming back into the higher probability realm. So like if they remade Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego today, <laughs> you know, does she steal the pyramids <laughs> or the Golden Gate Bridge? Or does she steal like a Google a data, data center? center? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I mean, it'd be pretty easy to track down. If she yeah. tried to power it up, it's not like she could just <laughs> plug it into the wall, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that might be a little blip on the grid there when that comes Whoa. online. Like, oh, okay, we found, we found her, ladies and gentlemen. The, the whole town shut we down. We got her. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, pretty interesting, actually. Um, but I don't think it's much of a concern for probably most of the people watching, maybe some of you. I mean, that is the thing about most of these kinds of security exploits, unless there's yeah. something that you have specifically that is a huge deal. Most ne'er-do-wells are probably after, like, your credit card number. Like, that, that's, that's a much lower hanging fruit that is much easier for them to turn into something of value. Uh, just to be super clear, we're not telling you to not care about your security and stuff. Not at all. Um, and, like, you should get the patch that makes it so that local attacks aren't a thing anymore. Like, um, oh, so you mean network attacks? Yeah, local yeah. network attacks. Yes. Um, uh, and you should definitely maintain physical possession of your platform. <laughs> I love the word platform. Platform, yeah. It's like so great. It's so it's agnostic. Like, it's, like, it's like it's almost like the CPU team wrote the statement and was like, okay, we're not taking all this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's platform. Okay, plat you guys, chipset guys, you guys behind this, we're gonna call, we're gonna say platform. What? No, I don't want nothing to do with this. It's your CPU. Okay, platform, cool. <laughs> we're going with that verbiage. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's. I think it's pretty interesting. I'll I'll keep watching this to a certain degree, um, but I'm not not all that concerned really. I mean, this hopefully isn't going to affect performance the way that Spectre and Meltdown. Yeah, did. Like that that screwed Floatplane for a little bit, and not just Floatplane. Kind of like poopy. A, it was a big performance problem for many many platforms. <laughs> See, I use the word platform. Again. Platforms. It was. It <laughs> ended. Up, it ended up being less of a problem than I think we expected, but like. It the still whole burned a lot of cycles. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it burned a lot of cycles, and like costs of things went up uh, because it screwed other people, which made demand for servers go up, which made cost for servers go up, and like all this other. It was it was a rough time. It was a very rough time. 